Okay, so I have to admit, my color grading kind of sucks. For years in my whole editing process, color grading has been the weakest link for me. But recently I found two plugins for DaVinci Resolve, which have really helped me level up and start getting much more professional results. And I'm pretty sure they can help you too. So color grading can be a pretty technical thing. I, however, want just a few things. I want good skin tones. I want a nice balanced image that's not overexposed. And I want to know how to manipulate certain parts of it to get the look that I want. And I want to do it fast. Now, I think these two pieces of software that I found, these two plugins, help me do that. And I've been very pleased with the results. So what are they? Okay, so both these plugins are actually DCTLs, which stands for DaVinci Color Transform Language. It's basically a way of allowing third-party developers and color scientists to access the tools in Resolve, but write their own code. Now you can get DCTLs of all shapes and sizes. One of the ones today is completely free. You can download it without paying a penny. And one of the other ones is a paid one. And one more thing before we go any further, I need to mention to you guys that DCTLs are only available in the studio version of Resolve, not the free version, unfortunately. Now, for those people that are wanting to study and get better at color grading, there are three fantastic YouTube channels that I personally am learning from myself. Kazi, I think his name is. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> pronouncing your name wrong. Darren Moston and Cullen Kelly. These guys, fantastic absolute wealth of knowledge. Uh, you don't need to learn from me. You should definitely go and learn from them. I'll put some links down in the description. So anyway, first, I need to show you how to install them. Okay, so to install DCTLs, it's very straightforward. All you need to do is in Resolve, you can click on the bottom right corner, little cog. That just opens up your, your project settings. And then you can go down to color management, click on the color management tab, mine's already selected. And then you can see here, just a little way down, there is a space that says lookup table. So this is your LUTs. And what you wanna do is also make sure that your 3D lookup table interpretation is set to tetrahedral. And also go to open LUT folder. When you click this, it will take you to where on your computer, you have all of the LUTs which you're using in DaVinci Resolve, your LUT folder. Now, you can see here, I have all of my DCTLs already in here. Now, wherever you've downloaded your DCTLs, open up that folder that they're in, copy them and paste them into this LUT folder. And then once you've closed Resolve and reopened it, they will be available for you to use in Resolve. And then all you have to do is you choose a node, you go to effects, stick on the DCTL, and then in the drop menu, drop down menu at the top, sorry, it will list all of the DCTLs that you have, and you select the one you want. Pretty straightforward. So now let me show you how to use them. All right, so here we go. First of all, I'll show you how I set it up. I've got a couple of shots here, which are from a video I'm doing for Chinese social media, but they're just an easy way to show you these plugins and talk about them as we do something. So here we can see we've got zero nodes and they're just the raw clips. I shot these in S-Log3 with S-Log3.Cine as the color space, I guess. And first of all, the first thing I do is I go to here to my gallery and my power grades, and I get this fixed node tree. It's from Darren Mostyn. You can get it, I'll leave a link down below in the description and you can go and get this for yourself. He gives it away for free. It's very good. We can just drop this on and then you can see if I take the effects off, press clean up selected node graph, and um, here we are. It looks very complicated, but it's really not. Mostly you'll be working in these first four here and the last four at the end there maybe even just one at the end, depending on what you want to do, how, if you want to develop your look. Um, these other ones are for certain case situations. Look, you've got some power windows. That means if you just want to put a window around a particular area. I had a shot recently and it had really overexposed from the window or it had really bright one, one side from the window. And if I exposed the, the, middle, the main part of the shot just right, it overexposed the window. So I put a power window on there and just brought the exposure down to match. So it brought it down nicely. But today we're going to keep it simple and just go over these, the beginning here and the end. Basically, if you look over the left-hand side, this is where 
the, the, we're coming in from the raw clip from my FX3. So we need to first convert this to a color space that we're gonna work in. So we can click on healer and thanks to Darren's amazing node tree, we already have a color space transform on there. So we're gonna transform from the color space which we shot in, which if we go up here, input color space, and we can go down and find Sony S Gamut 3 dot Cine, well that's a bit of a mouthful, and our input gamma of S log 3 right here, look. And it's already looking, you know, like it's, it's back to a uh, relatively good starting place. What it's doing is it's going in, it's converting it from that color space that we shot in to DaVinci Wide Gamut, because DaVinci Wide Gamut is a nice wide color space that we can work in uh, when we're editing. And at the end here, this last note, it says DWG, a little like greater than sign 709. We're converting back to 709 for our display, which is DaVinci, uh, sorry, going from DaVinci by Gamut to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. If we look on this look, we have our effects here and we're using this color space transform. So then all of the work that we do on these nodes in between those two uh, are working in a wider color space, which just allows us more freedom. Okay, so now our first DCTL is just gonna replace this one here. This one here at the end, our DaVinci Wide Gamut back to 709, is just using the standard Resolve color space transform. And to bring it in at the beginning, we need this because it has all the color profiles for the cameras that we're shooting on. But to bring it back out from DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709, we can use something which is better. Okay, so basically at the end here where we're converting back from DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709, we are using the same as we did to come into this whole color space, which is a color space transform. And that is fine, it works beautifully, but there is a better way to do it with a free DCTL called JP2499. I'll leave a link down below to, to go and download it for yourself. Uh, try it out for yourself. I find it gets better results. It's not a massive, massive difference, but I just find the look that it provides, it's just a bit nicer. So we can just go in here, turn off our effects a minute, go here, right click and reset note grade. That gives us this blank looking thing because we're not converting it back to Rex 9 We're still in DaVinci World Gamut. And then we can go to our effects go down and it's not even that far down there's this effect here saying DCTL and we've got a little hand go across and we want to drag the DCTL onto where it says DWG to 709 and it will pop up with this little box here let like say it's just very very simple there's one drop down menu and a global blend DCTL we can click on here and this opens up our DCTL menu and we can see all of the DCTLs we've got in here the one we want is here, look, JP underscore 2499 DRT. Click on that, and there we go. It's converting it back, but the difference, although being subtle, is slightly contrasty. I find the colors are a bit better. So I just prefer that this JP 2499 converts back nicer, and it has more dense colors than the Color Space Transform. It's a subtle difference, but it just, you know, it looks good. Okay, so our next DCTL is a paid one from Mononodes. It's in the utility pack and it is called Balance. This is the one which is a real game changer. This will help us nail our exposure levels, our white balance, our skin tones, all of that good stuff to get a really great shot. And this already looks pretty good. The skin tones look pretty good, but sometimes the slightest subtle differences can, can be almost you know, it's, it's hard to see it just at a glance and having this tool will help us. So how do we use it? It's pretty easy, right? We don't want to be doing it anywhere at the beginning of our node tree. We want it to be the last node between the output and our last node. So we can go to our last one here. We're not using this codec one, so that's all empty. We go to our color, uh, our color space transform where we're using the 2499 to convert back to Rec 709. And we wanna go after that. So we're gonna, on PC, Alt S, and we put in a serial node after that. We can bring it over here because it's easier to see while we, we have the effects panel open because if we open this up, look now, we can kind of not see it that well. But here, we wanna put our DCTL back on here click 
to select DCTL. And you can see all the ones I've already got on here. I've got a ton of mononodes on because they are fantastic. I'll uh, leave a link to their website down below and you can go and buy your own. But we want this look, the Mono Balance version 1.3. There's the older one, the 1.1, but 1.3 is the one you want. Click that on and instantly we've got wild colors everywhere. Uh, this isn't going to be our final output, although it would be kind of trippy, but you can see on here we've got a list of different things. If we turn it off, look, we, there's the original shot. We'll start with the skin tones. So this is where the wild colors start. You can see there's three colors in here they've been adding. Yellow, green, purple. Purple means there's too much magenta. It's swaying, it's, it's way over towards the magenta side. Yellow means it's bang on the skin tone line and green means it's too green. What a surprise. So what we wanna see is the majority of the skin being covered in yellow. This can, you can see here, look, if their lips are purple and sometimes you get like a little bit of a smattering across like more lower exposure areas of the image and that's because it's fine in the shadows to maybe have slightly more magenta. But what you wanna do is get a good balance of mostly yellow on there and if you wanna see it, and you want to see it normally and you want to see it like this at the same time you can see there is some options down below split horizontally split vertically split four way i would advise just splitting it vertically that way you get two different shots here although with this one it's not actually better okay so we got it split horizontally and you can see the top is the shot without the effect applied and the below at the bottom is with really the effect applied so we can be making our adjustments and seeing where the skin lies. So what we can then do if we wanted to adjust this is to use the offset and either push more magenta or more green into the image to get those skin tones to sit where we want. As it is, I'm happy with where those skin tones are. So we're gonna move on and look at the exposure heat map. We can stick our exposure heat map on and instantly we can see the window here is quite orange and red and yellow, so it's quite high on the exposure and they, my two sons here, have a lot lower exposure. Overall, I'm happy with the exposure. I would maybe actually bring it back down just a touch. But the beautiful thing with this is you can keep turning on and off and using this as a guide and then just dial it in. It just helps you, it gives, it gives you a good starting place and then you can tweak it either way. Like I said, not a professional colorist, just, you know, doing what looks good by eye and using this as a guide. Now, let's just check our saturation. We can turn off the exposure heat map. We can turn on the, the saturation heat map. Works exactly the same the exposure one does. Darker colors are not, satu not as saturated and the brighter the color, like yellow is, is re relatively saturated. Orange is getting way more saturated and red is, is you know, we're, it's get, if, if you have like bright red, then it's super saturated. And so we can instantly see from here that saturation levels on this are actually pretty okay. So as far as getting a balanced shot, this is all right. If, for the shot it is, I think it's all right. I'm happy with it exactly how it is. Right, so there we go. What do you think? Uh, did you already use DCTLs? If you have a DCTL that you can recommend me, hit me up in the comments down below. Always looking for more. Since I've uh, learned about DCTLs, I just keep finding these absolute gems everywhere. Uh, if you haven't already, check out Mononodes. Absolutely fantastic. I've already got a ton of their DCTLs, but there's, I think they offer an absolute ton. Uh, the, the free ones, the, the $24.99. And I think there's another one which I saw on Darren Mostyn's, which I haven't had time to investigate yet. But any other DC details, stick them in the comments down below. And uh, until next time, guys, peace.